It took Representative Dennis Bonin more than 20 years to become Speaker of the Texas House. It took him four months to lose the job. A conservative activist secretly recorded the Speaker saying unflattering things. In case you missed them, we'll go through the list in a minute. It led to weeks of internal struggle, which took a major turn when he announced he will not seek re-election next year. Phil Prazen brings us the story from Austin. The Speaker of the House is the most powerful person in the state you don't directly vote for. The person is chosen from the 150 House members each legislative session, so the Speaker needs support from 76 members to get elected, and Speaker Bonin simply lost support from too many Republicans to make the numbers work. For the rest of the population, it might be something that would be easy to kind of forget as the days, weeks, and months would go by. Mm -hmm. But when you only have a small group of people who are in charge of your future and you have badmouthed them, lied about them, talked behind their back, and been proven to be completely duplicitous, they're not going to forget that. Since early October, one by one, Republican representatives called on him to step down. The tipping point came Monday when five key members of the Speaker's own leadership team announced they no longer supported him. Once you forget that your constituency is that 149 voters, those dogs will eat you alive. Bonin's decision not to run could leave a vacuum for Republican power at a time Democrats are only nine seats away from taking over the Texas House. Big money donors usually give to people in power. Bonin might not be able to mobilize campaign funds to successfully fend off Democratic advances. And the $3 million he has already raised could be tainted. And now the money is maybe kind of in a lockbox. No one's sure if they either want to take it, if, they'd be, if he'd be willing to spend it. The House Democratic Caucus put out a statement saying Bonin made the right decision and they'll continue to work to lead Texas to a better tomorrow. Phil Prazen. KXAN News. The Texas Rangers are continuing their investigation into Bonin in the Speaker's home district. The Rangers Public Integrity Unit is focusing on whether or not Bonin committed a campaign finance violation during his controversial meeting with Michael Sullivan. As for the details from that secret recording, in case you missed them, the recording was made in June and released a week ago. In it, you can hear Bonin organizing campaigns against fellow Republicans and offering press access to the Sullivan's group in a exchange for campaign work against those Republicans. He also joked about a House member being a closeted gay man, called a woman vile, and took swipes at leaders from big cities. Some of Texoma's local representatives are also weighing in on Bonin's announcement. Representative Drew Springer of the 68th District said in a statement, after 48 hours of reflection and conversation with scores of colleagues and citizens feedback from HD 68, it became clear the Texas House needed new leadership to heal and unify the Republicans to maintain a majority. 69th District Representative James Frank also releasing a statement on the future departure, saying his recent mistakes were egregious and significant and dramatically undermined the trust of House members and the public. Without that trust, it is impossible to be an effective Speaker of the House. Both representatives, however, did thank Bonin for his service. To further analyze the fallout of this, we're joined by political editor for the Texas Tribune, Matthew Watkins. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Matthew, we're just now learning that Bonin won't face criminal prosecution. Tell us a little bit about, a little bit about that update. That's right. When, when news of this kind of scandal first broke, the uh, House General Investigating Committee asked the Texas Rangers to investigate. Um, the Rangers have completed their investigation into this case, submitted a report to the Brazoria County DA along with the legislature, and the district attorney said this morning that um, uh, she did not see enough evidence to move forward with a criminal prosecution. And Matthew, when you ask Texans what they don't like about politics, this Bonin situation may be a perfect example of what people hate. Now, that's backroom deals where politicians say one thing in public and another in private for political favors. Talk to me a little bit about the distrust here and how this could um, have a long-term impact. Yeah, you know, it's an interesting question because 
Um, you know, in a lot of ways, kind of the 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 what happens in the legislature is not um, is not well known by a lot of members of the public. But this kind of thing can really be a, a problematic for lawmakers, not just the Speaker of the House, but for House members. You know, you have secret recordings, you have deals being made. Like you said, it's it's kind of the worst stereotypes of politics. And you know, we're in a uh, campaign season where Democrats are hoping to retake the Texas House, and I think that they are hopeful that they can use. Use this as to their advantage is to kind of you know uh, encourage uh, voters to to consider uh, electing new leadership in Texas. Right, Matthew. Do we have an idea yet what role, if any, Bonin will play in the 2020 in hold in holding the um, GOP seats? Well, so Bonin has raised you know millions of dollars. The last reporting period, it was three million dollars that he planned to use to help House Republicans in elections. Um, he still has that money. He can still spend it as he sees fit. But you know the difference now is you know he's at what we call a lame duck speaker. People know he's not coming back. So that kind of leadership role kind of goes away a little bit because uh, you know a lot of the power of the speaker is his ability to control the legislative session. If members, other people know he won't be there, then some of that power goes away. And what about the Texas Republican Party as a whole? What is the mood the Tribune is hearing from GOP lawmakers in Austin? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I think the GOP is looking for other leadership in the Republican Party to step up here. We heard from Governor Greg Abbott, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, you know, saying they were going to work really hard, make uh, elections in the Texas House one of their top priorities. You know, there is a bit of a leadership vacuum in the House because it'll probably be a while before we know who the next House Speaker will be. All right, Matthew, thanks so much.